afternoon, everyone. How wonderful to see so many of you joining our extravaganza today. We've got a real fun, packed session to share with you. But before I start to talk about any of that, I'm Fiona Goddard, and I'm one of the educationalists that work at WIS Education. And I've got a colleague with me who I think many of you might know, and I'll let him introduce himself. Hi everyone, my name is Matt Jones. I also work for WIS Education. Um, welcome to the Mass Extravaganza. We're really looking forward to uh, working with you today and showing you the fabulous activities that we've got planned. So hopefully we can get going with that. Great, thanks Matt. So just a bit of admin first, so you know how things are going to work. The session is going to be roughly 40, 45 minutes. Um, it depends how much you chat with us, because we really want you to engage in these activities. And the best way to do that is when we ask some questions, if you could put the answers in the chat, and then we can see your responses. And that would really help us. And um, we know then how engaged you are. You'll only see your own chat. We'll see everyone's chat, but we're not gonna overwhelm you with seeing what everyone else is putting in. So um, you'll just see your own chat, but we really want you to, to join in with us. Um, and I know some of you are there as a class and some of you are there maybe on your own. So, you know, have a chat with your friends if you're in class to try and work out what you think some of these answers will be. And the other thing just to quickly say is that we are going to go at quite a fast pace and we really want you to join in but if you're going to try and do these activities at the same time you might think slow down Fiona slow down so we've got a handout that's going to come out afterwards and you'll be able to do all of these activities in your own time so don't feel rushed please just maybe just enjoy the chat today enjoy us doing the sessions and then have a go at doing some of these activities um maybe later today or, or tomorrow or next week whenever you've got time so yeah there'll definitely be a handout for you so whilst we've been waiting for everyone to join us we put up some um a little challenge for you really um which is called estimate how many and there are some pictures of seven different things that we wondered if you knew. Now, estimates are exactly that. They're not exact numbers. They're just purely an estimate. So having a look at these pictures, and I see lots of people have already been putting things in the chat, which is great. So what do you think? Um, you know, for example, how many polar bears do you think are left in the world? Which is a bit of a, a, a sad one. Um, how many leaves on a tree? That's quite a tricky one. Stripes on a tiger, how did you find that one? Anyway, so we'll start having a look. What, what's in the chat, Matt? What, what have people been putting? We've got lots of answers in the chat already. We've got leaves on the tree. Um, we're looking in the thousands there, we think. Okay. So we've got an answer of 1,021, which is very specific. Um, we've got polar bears, there's a popular one for polar bears. We've got anything between 400 and 20. Oh, okay. And we're thinking hundreds, I think, there, probably. Okay. Although, yeah, maybe as few as 20, which would be sad, wouldn't it? Yeah. So, okay, well, let's have a look. The leaves on a tree, I'm going to tell you what the answer is. Now, it's going to depend. It's not going to be the same for every single tree. It's going to depend how old the tree is um, and also the type of tree as well. But they reckon a mature, healthy tree can have up to, are you ready? What was it, thousands was the answer? Did you say Ben? That was what we thought, yes. Sorry, I said Ben then, I meant Matt, sorry. Um, it is 200,000 leaves wow. on a tree. I do you know, I sometimes think there might be that many when in autumn, when all the leaves fall on the ground, there are so many, aren't there then? So I, I may, but you're right in the thousands, but. 200,000, that's an awful lot. What about other, what else is coming through on the chat then, Matt? We've got lots of ones about the stripes on a tiger. That's a ah. really popular one. Um, and we've got, someone said 100, we've got 50, we've got 70. So we're thinking around that range for stripes on a tiger. Do you know, there's some good guesses there and you can almost work it out. You could almost work out how many on each leg, couldn't you? And then double it, work it on its tummy. Um, but you're absolutely right. They've, they would say they estimate and obviously each tiger is going to be slightly different, but over 100 stripes on a tiger. So, yeah, well done. 
So that's a really good estimate. On that one. Yeah. Great. Yeah, really good. We've also got eggs for the turtle. Mm. We've got in between 60 and 100 for that one. So I'm just having a quick look at my notes. Oh, yes, I remember now. Now, yeah, this is an interesting one because um, when the turtles go to lay their eggs, the female turtles come out of the sea and they go up the beach and they lay them in the sand. And then when they hatch, all the little baby turtles then have to have that big journey from the nest back to the sea. And unfortunately, there's a lot of predators around that actually sometimes do take them or sometimes they get lost and go in the wrong direction. So they do lay a lot of eggs each time and they can lay eggs anything up to between two to 10 times a year. And they actually lay roughly about, well, just in the, it's in the hundreds, it's about 110 eggs a time, which is an awful lot of young baby turtles. Um, but as I said, not all survive, um, unfortunately. But yeah, so that was some good guesses there. Okay, mm -hmm. my favorite is the bee, I must admit. And I am absolutely amazed by this. So how many times per second do you think bees flap their wings? What, what responses have we got, Matt? We have got a few. We've got anything from four flaps per second to two million. <gasps> It's quite a range. Uh, <laughs> That's a huge range. <laughs> I might have covered it there. Um, okay. yeah. If you think how quick a second is, trying to move your, even your hand, how many do we get managed to move in a second? It, it's not many, is it? But bees, and I think this is why you can hear them coming. You hear that hum, don't you, when you hear a bee coming. They actually flap their wings up to 200 times per second. I just think that's amazing um but obviously some of you thought a lot more but uh, 200 that's i think that's incredible which is why until they settle you don't actually see the wings do you because it's just a complete blur because they're going so fast we have got one of our classes vienna who said 200 flaps per second just oh, came in. oh well done <laughs> oh well done. So we must have a bee lover maybe in, in, that, in that class Okay, um, should, should we, should we um, leave that and move on? Because I think we haven't covered them all, but maybe that you can carry on with that when the handout comes out afterwards and uh, to try and work those out. What do you think, Matt? Should we? Yeah, yeah? yeah we'll move on. Okay, now there's a reason why I've shown you polar bears and trees and turtles and, and bees and tigers and icebergs. And that is all because of the world that we live in, we know that due to climate change, there is a lot of our species, a lot of our, you know, our nature in our environment, the, all the creatures and animals that live in our environment, because of the way that we have been living, um, you know, we are affecting all of that um, with the fossil fuels, you know, with all our litter and things like that. And we're affecting it and actually causing a lot of species um, to their numbers are dropping. I mean, we didn't do the polar bears, but you know, there's not many polar bears left in the world now. And it would be so sad, you know, if the polar bear goes extinct. Now they, they say that if we carry on behaving like we are, and hopefully we know that lots of countries are all trying to do something now, but they say if we carry on like we are by 2100, so we're at, at the moment, we're 2022 for the year, aren't we? So how many years time is that? It's not many. It's certainly gonna be in many of your lifetimes. If we carry on like we are, then they estimate, this is a scientist, that up to maybe 50% of all the world's species could go extinct because of climate change. And I, I find that quite frightening to think that my own children, you know, could actually live to witness that, which would be horrendous. So, you know, we thought at Wiz, we need to do something to make people much more aware, which is why we've got a summer challenge this year called Building for a Greener Future. And I don't know if any of you have been having a go with that, but it's all about sustainability, looking after our environment, being aware of what's in our environment. Um, and they're just, just little mini projects, there's eight of them that you can join in. You could just do one activity from them or you could do the whole 
eight projects. It's entirely up to you. But if you haven't had a look, go and have a look because there's lots of fun activities you can do in school or, or at home. So lots of flexibility. And talking about that, I'm going to hand over to Matt, who's got another activity for you now. Brilliant. Thanks, Fiona. Yeah, so just on that nature theme, this is one of our activities we're going to have a go at next. I'm wondering if you just think for a minute whether you've stopped to look around and notice whenever you've been out for a walk um, or going through anywhere in our world, whether you've ever noticed the amazing shapes and patterns that you find out in nature. And actually, the great thing is that mathematics um, forms all of the building blocks for all of these shapes, as you can see on the screen, um, that are across our natural world. Um, you can see them in lots of stunning ways. You can see the pictures there. Fiona and I have chosen a few of our favourite ones, and we're going to see if you can all tell us what those pictures are. Now, I think there are some that are probably a little bit easier to guess than others, but there are some very tricky ones in there. Um, so what we're going to do is give you a few seconds um, to pop in the chat for us um, what you think. Firstly, where in nature do these come from? And also, can you name the shape that you can see? So, for instance, if you wanted to pop in the chat for number one, um, you might put number one hexagon, because you can see the hexagon shape in there. And you might know that it comes from a honeycomb. So if you were to pop that in the chat, we'd be able to see that you can definitely you definitely know where that comes from. So see if you can tell us the number of the picture the shape that you can see and where in nature you think that comes from. So I can see some answers already coming in. Yeah, lots of you have got the hang of it by putting in the hexagon and the honeycomb, that's great. So let's see, I can see lots of people going for number four. And I think they've identified the animal, but have a think about the shape of that you can see on there as well because I think we can see lots of animals. Lots of you are getting very excited about where in nature you can see them. Which one do you think is hardest, Fiona, for you? Which one? I think, I think number eight. Yeah, I think number eight as well. I think we have had somebody get that one before. We have. Yeah, yeah, we have. We have. So oh, got... number seven. Oh. Oh, number seven, they're saying they can see stars. Interesting. I wonder what they, I wonder if they know where it um, comes from, what part um, those shapes are of. I wonder, we've got, oh, it's got number 10, a circle for some flower. Yeah. I've seen number nine, someone's identified before as a pineapple. Okay, um, yeah. Yeah, we've got a spider's web for number 11, saying that they're rectangles and a spiral. Yeah. Oh, that's good. And number uh, for number three, they've put a snake, but they haven't been specific. They've just said a polygon. I, I think mm -hmm. that's because, Matt, when I look at the snake, I sometimes I see a hexagon and sometimes I see a rhombus. Yeah, it's one of those tricky ones, isn't it? It where is. The shape it is. Yeah. And yeah. as you said at the beginning, probably different on every single snake. Yes. Yeah. 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 See, number four, someone said rectangle and it's from a tortoise. Yeah, I don't know. If you look really carefully, I'm wondering if I can see more than four sides. Hmm. I'm wondering if anyone's going to have a go at number eight, which I think is... <laughs> I haven't seen anyone attempt that one yet, but I bet they will in a minute. I wonder if they... Yeah. Oh, oh number eight. Yeah, well nice. done. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very impressed. That was a challenge. I reckon maybe the teachers were onto that one. <laughs> oh, that's very good. Well spotted. I wonder if we should probably reveal some of the answers. I think there are some there yeah. that you've definitely got the right answers for. So well done. Keep your guesses coming in and we'll go through them all um, as well. So we've talked about number one being a honeycomb and it was a hexagon shape. So well done that saw, those that saw that one. The giraffe is a funny one, isn't it? Because it's um, lots of sort of irregular polygon shapes on the giraffe and they're all ever so slightly different. But well done for those that managed to find out it was a giraffe. 
We've said for the snake, you can see um, some of the rhombus shapes, various other ones as well, but that was a snake number three, so well done. Number four, well, I've seen lots of ones come in say this is the turtle shell, and there are some hexagonal shapes on there, so well done. Number five, I did actually see an, a correct answer for this, which was the giant's causeway yeah. stones. So well done, whoever, I'll scroll back through the chat and have a look. But well done, whoever got that one, because that's a geographic one as well. Uh, number six, there was a circle, which was the tree trunk, and those circles going all the way into the middle when you cut off that tree trunk. So well done, those that said that. Number seven, I think we said there was a star shape in there, didn't we? I didn't see if anybody could identify what that was. No, I didn't. See. I'll have a quick scroll through now for you, Matt. Yeah, so number seven, any, any last? Oh, oh, someone's just put the correct answer there. I've just seen it pop up. So number seven was some red cabbage. So you might have done some cooking and seen the red cabbage and recognised that's the middle of a red cabbage. Well done to the person that identified the spiral pattern on number eight was actually aloe vera. So well done to that person, because that was probably the trickiest one. Um, number nine, lots of you said pineapple and there were some semicircles in there. Lots of you said number 10 was the sunflower and that was circular. The spider's web was number 11 and you had lots of quadrilaterals in there, didn't you? So they're all slightly different just because of the way the spider makes those. And number 12 was another, lots of irregular shapes within that leaf. So well done for having a go at those. I was really impressed how much we were getting in there, Fiona, with the chat. I think virtually everyone got pretty much all of those, which is great. Yeah, well yeah. done. Everyone's really working good. really hard. Well done. OK. So next time you're kind of out in nature, if you go for a walk, have a look and just see if you can see any of those shapes that we've been talking about. Um, and maybe just find more of your own as well, because that's always really interesting as well. All right, we're gonna move on to our next activity, but we're gonna take the idea of those shapes and use it for our next bit as well. So the first thing you'll be able to see on your screen are some colored shapes. And I think, oh, someone's ahead of the game here. Someone has already named the first one, which is brilliant, because that's the first thing we're going to ask you to do. We're going to ask you to name the shapes you can see on your screen just before we start. So we've got an answer for number one, which was a hexagon. So someone's very on the ball there. And um, any other guesses for the blue shape you can see on there before Fiona um, reveals it? I've seen parallelogram coming through. Oh, yes, I can see, yeah. We've got equilateral triangle, I can see on there. I think they're referring to that green one there. So well done, here we've got that one. And um, we've got some diamonds coming in. And we've got, we've got someone saying the hexagon is the biggest. I think they've read our next bit. <laughs> oh, I can see someone has put in a rhombus. So that's an interesting one. So well done for getting that one. So the blue one was a rhombus. And I think, yes, number three, they've put trapezium. So we've got them. Excellent. OK, so well done for naming those. What we're going to do next is to answer the question you can see at the top. Now, we want to see some really creative maths here. We want to see who can be really creative with this. Um, and I can see someone has already said that the hexagon is the odd one out because it's the biggest. And that's definitely a fair answer. I'm wondering if we can think of some really creative mathematical reasons why those sh that your shape is the odd one out. So in the chat, I'm going to give you maybe 30 seconds to have a look at those shapes and see if you can work out which is the odd one out. And we want to know why that's the best bit is why do you think it's the odd one out? So, yeah, so someone so far has said the hexagon because it's the biggest. I wonder if we can get anything or maybe about sides, parallel sides, angles, just to get you thinking. So pop in the <laughs> chat for me. If you've got any ideas about which is the odd one out, let's see. Oh, we've got one pop up that says rhombus because it has no lines of symmetry. Interesting. And we've got, OK, that's an interesting one. So the triangle we're saying doesn't have a flat surface on the top. So all the others they're saying, Fiona, have flat surfaces on the top. 
or a flat side, I guess, in this case, yeah. whereas the triangle's pointed. I guess it would depend because I don't think I can do it, but if I change the orientation, ah. <laughs> the shape, that might change it, but yeah. yeah. Um, I saw one which I like as well, which I was going to say, actually, and you, you've said it before me, the triangle's the odd one out because it's the only one that's got an odd number of sides. So that's a really good one. Yeah, brilliant. I think someone literally just said the same thing as you. Great yeah. mind. Yeah. Like there. So we've got some very creative ones. I wonder if there's anything about the angles on the concrete, whether anyone can see anything about the angles of those shapes that you might have noticed or something about lines of symmetry or something you might have come across before in your maths lessons. I did um, see one about symmetry. Oh, rhombus has no lines of symmetry. Uh, okay, yeah. So we've got triangle because it has no parallel sides, no parallel lines. Yeah, that's a good one. Definitely. Anyone else got any others? I wonder, shall I? Shall I take you over to um, where we can actually look at the angles? Because that might help then people with, with working out maybe something about the angles. So if I... Yeah, we've got one last one that came in here that says hexagon because it only has obtuse angles, which I thought was interesting. Okay. So okay. that might be one to practice. Yeah. So let's get the shapes. Now I've already got... The trapezium there. So this is my angle measurer. So if I put the trapezium there, if I move it around, what 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 do you think the angle is going to be for this? Ooh. So these two angles here for a trapezium are sixty, but the other two are they going to be the same? What do you think? Let's move it so you can see not 60 it's going to be yeah. an obtuse angle 120 okay so keep those numbers in your head 60 and 120 so if I'm going to go and I'm sure you're all going to know this and I'm sure I can hear you all shouting it out now <laughs> what are the angles for the equilateral triangle I'm not even sure I really need to measure this because I know that all of you will know this steady hand so yeah so in equal equilateral triangle each of the angles are 60 okay so trapezium had 120 and 60 equilateral triangle has got 60 what do we think about the rhombus then now they've got two different angles in the rhombus we've got these two angles which are obtuse again and we've got these two which are Acute. So what do you think the obtuse is going to be? I wonder if there's a prediction coming in. See if they can beat you to it. So 120. Okay, now without me measuring, I wonder if we can have a prediction then. So what's the other angle within our rhombus? Any guesses coming through? Oh, it's going to be an acute, it's going to be less than 90 degrees. And if we're thinking about the connection with these shapes. Oh, oh we've got a guess. Ah, there we go. <laughs> ah, they just beat you to it. <laughs> so, ah, so trapezium had 16, 120, and the Rhombus has 60 and 120. So what do we think about the hexagon then? Interesting. One. Any ideas? Anyone think they might know what they might be just before we get to measuring it? Oh, we've got some guesses coming in. We've got some guesses of 120. Ah, well done. Let's have a look and see. Oh, are they correct? Yeah. Well done. Yeah, someone said 120. So we've got three or four guesses of 120 there. I think we're getting well the idea. Done. So we're going to do an activity now. And we can only do this activity because of the angles that these shapes have got. So they've got 
either 120 degrees or they've got 60 degrees. And if you also think about the relationship between 60 and 120, I don't know if you've been thinking about that as well, that also you know, helps with, with the, the game that we're going to play next. So I'm gonna leave those thoughts with you and you can carry on talking about that um, a bit later. So if I go back to our game boards and Matt's going to actually talk you through a game that we're going to play. Right, thank you. So this is a game, as you can see, for two players. So we're gonna take turns placing one shape on the game board at a time. One of the rules is that each new shape has to touch one that's already on the board. And the winning player is the person that places the piece that completes the rhombus. So you can see the shapes on the left hand side. We're going to choose to put those in different locations on this rhombus grid. And whoever puts the last one in there is going to be the winner. Now, I'm going to play against Fiona. And every time that we've ever done this, Fiona, you have managed to beat me. And so I'm going to ask for everyone's help <laughs> to try finally to be victorious and beat Fiona at this game. So in the chat, you can tell me um, where you'd like me to place some of the pieces and I will place them there and we'll see if we can out strategize Fiona for the first time ever. So Fiona, can I go first this time? I was just going to say, do you know what? I'm going to let you choose so you can't <laughs> blame me. <laughs> You do the game, you know. Okay. Excellent. Okay. So I'd like some suggestions then in the chat. Which shape do you think we should start with? Where do you think it's going to be a bit tricky to describe where it's going to go? So I might place it, but I'm looking for some advice. Oh, this straight away, someone said the triangle at the top. Yeah, lots of triangles going in there. So I'm going to claim this space, Fiona and take their advice and put the triangle at the top. Okay. Okay, over to you. Well, I'm going to go, I'm gonna cover as much space as I can because then I'll be able to strategize a bit better with my moves. So because it's got to touch your triangle, I'm going to put my hexagon there. Okay, right. So I'm looking for a bit more advice then. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, so straight away, we've had hexagon close to the bottom, but we just need to remember that it's got to touch a shape that's already on there. So I can't go straight to the bottom end um, straight away. Let's see. Or oh, trapezium got, underneath. Yeah, so I might put a trapezium here and take that advice and pop that one there. Ooh. Okay. Over. Right, I'm going to go diamond. Diamond, I don't know why I said that. It's because it looks like a diamond. I mean rhombus, I'm so sorry. I'm going to put my rhombus there. Okay, interesting. All right, so, okay, so we've got rhombus. We've got on the left under Fiona's rhombus. So I'm wondering whether... It fits under there like that. So I'm going to do that one there. Does that count? Is that touching, do you think? Is it touching diagonally? I don't know. Was it sides touching or was it corners? That's a really good question. Well, well, no. we'll, we'll play by this rule. We'll say corners can, <laughs> like if you've placed it already. Okay. <laughs> right. Do you know, I'm going to go for the strategy of covering up as much space as possible. So I'm going to grab another hexagon and I'm going to place this here. Oh, we can start working out moves soon, I think. Yeah, I'm, oh, I'm wondering what's going to be the next one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, it depends. Well, this is still, still tricky. Can't work it out. Still in the balance. Interesting. Yeah. Right. So we've got... Let's see, we've got triangle coming up quite a lot. I'm thinking, where can we put the triangle to make sure Fiona doesn't win this one? Yeah, <laughs> triangle coming up a lot, so I'm definitely going to go with that. Okay. I'm going to go here. No, I'm not going to use the triangle that's the right way up, and I'm going to pop it. Oh, no, no. I'm going to pop it in there, like that. So thanks everyone. 
Okay. Fiona's going to do. I'm going to go trapezium and I'm going to place it there. Right. Oh my gosh. So we've got four triangles left and it depends what happens here. You're going to have to try and work that out in your head. Yeah. I wonder what's best. Anyway, don't, don't want to rush you, Matt, but it's already. <laughs> <laughs> Right, okay, I'm going to pop. Yeah, I agree with that person that just said, uh, they said put the trapezium on the right there. So I'm going to fit it in there like that. Just okay. what I was thinking. So we can work this out now. My go, your go, my go, your go. Oh, let's have a go. I oh think I might have won this again, Matt. <laughs> Every time. Oh, there we go. Right, so you've done that one. I'm going to go down here. So oh, it doesn't really doesn't matter. I'm just going to pop oh. that. There we go. Oh no, Fiona, not again. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. There we go. All right, I'll place the winning piece in. Oh, oh wrong, wrong way around. Let's rather than me have to fiddle around with moving it. There we go. Sorry, Matt. Another time, maybe. <laughs> I just can't beat you at this one. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for your, your advice. We'll have to keep trying next time. OK, right. So we spoke about those shapes and we said that the angles were either 60 or 120, which meant that we could actually fit them together with having no gaps, no overlapping of the shapes. And there's a special name for this. And I wonder if you can put it in the chat. And if you look at the pictures in front of you now, exactly the same is happening there. there. Some of them are regular shapes, some are irregular shapes, but they're all fitting together perfectly with no gaps, no overlaps. And it's got a special name. I wonder if it's coming through in the chat. I'm gonna to click to the next slide because, yeah, it's gonna tell us. There are some more pictures here. It's tessellating. There are tessellations. So we can see some quite simple patterns like with the hexagons here, or we've got some squares and triangles here. And then we've got some much more, and I'm sure you've seen them in tile patterns or on pavements, some really quite intricate tessellation designs here. Now, over on the right-hand side are some I think I love these, um, are some pictures which are also tessellating. Now, when I look at the top one, what do you see, Matt? What jumps out at you? I see the cat. Yes. That's the first one I see. Yeah. Can you see the other creature that's there as well? Sort of, it's, sort of. Oh, I just see its head above each cat. <laughs> yeah. Cat so we've got the cat and the dog, yeah. Which I think is brilliant. I, I love that, you know, and the fact that they tessellate. And then there's the beautiful one below with um, the butterflies and how they tessellate. And that got me thinking. And I don't know if you've heard of an artist called Escher, um, but, you know, he, he, he's, a, he's actually not around now, but the work that he did, um, and a lot of it was involving a lot of mathematics, and he was really looking at reflection and symmetry and perspective, and he's done some amazing artwork, and there's just a few examples here. Um, if you go onto his website, you can see so many other examples, but if we look here, we've got some like a, a, a chameleon sort of lizardy sort of thing, um, and there's three different colours there, and on this one, I love this one in the middle with the yellow fish and the green frog, it's absolutely brilliant. And then we've got some more here with, with some fish. And I thought, wouldn't it be fun if we could work out a way, because how does he do this? How, if we could work out a way to make some irregular shapes so that they tessellate. So I'm going to show you what I found out because it is so much fun. So I'm gonna stop sharing and I'm gonna actually pin the screen now so that it's going to be on me so you can watch what I'm doing. Right, I'm going to move my laptop and I want to put it so you can actually see my desk. There we go. So hopefully that's going to be about right. Now, what you need to do this is you need a square piece of paper. You need a pencil or a pen, up to you, and some scissors. Now, if you're not very good at cutting out, do you need a bit of help, then you can always get an adult to help you with that bit. Um, and then you just need another 
bigger sheet of paper. So I've just got a piece of A4. But before I put that in the way, I'm just going to talk you through. Oh, the other thing you need is some sellotape as well, just to do a bit of sticking. It's not much. So I've already drawn some shapes on here. But what you do with your square, first of all, is you must go from a corner, okay? And you can do whatever. You could, we can wiggle all over. I mean, sometimes simple is better. So I'm going from here and I'm just doing a nice simple shape like that. Now I've gone from this corner and I must go to the other, the, um, the corner here, okay? It must be on the same side, all right? And what I'm gonna do then is get my scissors and actually just carefully cut it out. Now, it, do you know what? It wouldn't matter if you did make a little mistake with the cutting because it's just gonna to add to the irregular shape that we're making. Now, what's important is that when you finish cutting that out, so that went there, is this side here has then got to go to this side here. And that is really important. So I'm just gonna join them, I'm trying to keep a steady hand. There, I'm gonna get my little bit of sellotape and I'm just going to tape it there, okay? So we, I could stop there, but I'm not going to because I wanna make this a real fun shape. So I'm going to now go from the, another corner here and I'm going to draw, I'm gonna do a bit of a wiggly line, okay? And then once again, get my scissors and I cut shape. I don't know if you can see with the light reflecting on it as well, but I'm going to cut the shape. Oh, it's a lot of weaving here around with the scissors, making sure that I go to the corner. And then once again, remember what I said, it's really important. I remember where it was placed. This side here must match this side here. So I put it there. Perfect. Get my little bit of sellotape stick it, there we go. So now I've got an irregular shape. And now this, for me, I love art. And this is where you can get really creative. You just need to look at your shape and think, hmm, what does this remind me of? What could it be? Because it can be whatever, whatever you want it to be. So I'm gonna get my pen now and I'm gonna start drawing. Actually, I'm gonna turn it over so I'm not actually drawing on the the sellotape. So I'm going to draw, mm, what can I say? Do you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to put some teeth in here, there. And then I'm going to do, I'm going to do an eye here with a big eyebrow and another big eyebrow here with an eye there. So I'm going to put a few nostrils there, right? And then I'm going to like that. I think that will probably just put a few lines on it there. Okay, so if I turn that round, there we are. I don't know, I don't know if I've done a dragon, a wolf, a dog or what I've done, but I've um, drawn a little design on there. Now, what I do then is I can place this wherever I want on my sheet. So I'm just gonna place it, I'm gonna place it here and I very carefully draw around my shape. Now this is where you do have to be careful. I'm doing this quick because it's, not very exciting watching me draw around a shape, but when you're doing it yourself, make sure you take a bit of time. Now, the magic comes because, oh, that fits there. Can you see how I'm now starting to, to tessellate? So then if I, it is going off the page, but that doesn't matter. And then I can draw it here. Oh, I've gone off the, Carry on, it's, this one's gone off the page as well. And then how does this fit here? Oh, we've got to try and work it out. Fits here like this. And then, and you just keep, you can fill your whole page of just drawing your tessellations. So there we go. Now I've done one earlier, so I'm just gonna quickly show you what I've done earlier. And there we go. Now, I, what I find intriguing, and maybe this is something you can talk about, is why does it tessellate? Because I've now made this, I've got wiggly lines, straight lines, I've got all funny shapes, but it still tessellates. So why does that happen? So that might be a nice discussion to have 
um, with your friends to try and work out why that is tessellating. Obviously, this is a different picture to the one I've just drawn around, but really exciting. And you know what? I've drawn the same, sh the same face on each of them. I could start a pattern where I draw different pictures within each of the tessellations. So lots and lots of fun to be had. So I hope you enjoyed that. And it's a really exciting way. I think it makes some lovely displays in your classrooms, um, but a lovely way to bring in some maths and some art um, together. Right, okay, so I'm going to come back and I am going to take the spotlight off me and we'll go back to right share screen. Okay, so hope you enjoyed that. Um, and I did say it would take about 40 minutes, 45 minutes, and we've just got to that point where we've come to the end. So I'm just going to say, Thank you all so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed those activities. And remember there is a handout that's coming explaining all of this. So you don't need to try and remember any bits, it will come to you and you can have a lot of fun like I did with those tessellations. And I'll just let Matt finish off, so thank you. Yeah, just to echo what Fiona said, thank you so much for coming everybody. We hope you had real fun kind of joining in with those activities and do get the, uh, the pack and kind of have a little bit more Kind of time to look into those because there's so much you can do with them and if you do have any pictures of displays you make with your tessellations it'd be really good to see and um, just for it, finally one more time don't forget the summer challenge is out there the resources um, can be accessed through our website and they are completely free so if you've got some time this summer to have a look at some really exciting stem resources get involved have a look at it you can take it as far do as little or as much as you want um, but it is out there, so do get involved. And we'd love to see kind of anything that you uh, find out from the Summer Challenge or any of your creations. We would absolutely love to see those. So do get in touch and show us those. So kind of finally, one more time, thank you so much for coming and we hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you really soon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.